Welcome, everybody. I'm Alex Gittens. I'm the chair of the NYS board, and I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Months ago, uh, NYS put together an ad hoc committee to stay updated on the COVID pandemic and the impact of that on our program. I'd really like to thank John Seal uh, for chairing that committee. We've gathered and assessed information from the governor's guidelines um, on reopening the American League of Youth Orchestras, as well as the Norwalk City Hall. School systems uh, and, and other music programs as well have contributed to our decision making as we're going forward. All indications are that we will not be able to gather as we have traditionally in the past for rehearsals and concerts. Still, as you've seen from the amazing videos uh, and the music our ensembles have made uh, together this past spring, it, it's just been stellar. And so we're still able to practice and come together um, just in a different way. So we decided to have this Q&A to answer questions and, and inform you as to where our program is at this point. Um, if you'll notice, there is a Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. You can ask questions as we go, uh, and we'll answer them at the end. Um, of course, I want to stress that we're here to answer your questions, not just today, but as we go forward, and we'll keep you informed as things develop. And with that, I want to hand it off to Jonathan um, to answer questions about our, or to uh, present on our programs. Thanks so much, Alex. Actually, Sarah, did you want to talk about online auditions first, and then uh, and then we'll continue with some more specifics about uh, the programming? Uh, yes, uh, people are still signing on. Um, if you just joined us, Alex gave us a, a welcoming statement. Hold on one second. Um, but. I just want to start off by saying during the spring uh, transfer from live rehearsals to our virtual programming, NYS adopted some new technology, well, new to us. Uh, the conductor started using Zoom to interact with the children um, and Barry used uh, Google Classrooms. We found that Google Classrooms was a much more effective way to interact with the children, um, young musicians, so all the conductors will be adopting Google Classrooms for the fall. Uh, we expect to continue using Zoom and Google Classroom, and then we're still um, looking at new technology, trying to add uh, more platforms uh, to make everything a more enjoyable experience for the students. Right now, we plan to offer online classes from September through December, your tuition, will reflect uh, approximately 10 to 11 sessions for the large ensembles and then the small classes we will be offering. Uh, our hope is to go live in January. Um, we're still following, as you I'm sure all are, your schools and your local um, towns protocol. Uh, Norwalk City Hall has not yet uh, come up with a protocol on what we will need to do to come back, but we will stay engaged with them and let you know as soon as we know. Um, with that in mind, our auditions this fall will be online and we have adopted um, Accepted. Some of you may have used Accepted for summer camp auditions or other programs. If you're not a, um, a familiar with Accepted, it is a very easy program to learn. Your child will uh, record their audition videos and upload them to the platform and then the conductors will assess them. Uh, when that platform is up and ready, uh, you will receive a newsletter that it's time to start your audition process. Now I'm gonna let Jonathan speak about the new audition requirements and the large ensemble programs. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I think you need to go ahead and highlight my video, by the way. There you go, great. Um, Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jonathan Yates. I'm music director of the our wonderful organization. Um, just to quickly follow up first on, on what Sarah was saying about the auditions. Um, they're going to be in many ways as similar as we could possibly make them to in the past. Um, for the younger groups, that means uh, you know one, one solo work. For the upper groups, two contrasting solo works. 
uh, we will have, we'll have scales as well, and we'll have specific guidelines for those. Um, we are going to replace sight reading, of course. Sight reading is something we'll no longer be able to do with orchestral excerpts, and we will have those prepared for you in advance. So we are, you know, in any, in every way, shape, and form, we're trying to provide as much consistency with our our past practices. So um, I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview first, and then I'm going to talk about what what virtual large ensembles are going to look like in the fall. So, you know, as none of you need to be told, we're living through, you know, pretty unparalleled times and, you know, musicians, you know, and I extend that to all the young members of Norwalk Youth Symphony, what we do, we do in groups and that's what we really love. But so it was a challenge in the spring to reimagine what orchestra would look like virtually. And I'm so proud of what all the conductors came up with this fall, a combination of video projects and, and lectures. And I think we did really great. But you know, that said, it was obvious that if we were going to continue vir virtual programming in the fall, we were going to have to come up with a thorough and pedagogically consistent plan to provide a top-notch educational, uh, orchestral education for our students. You know, we do feel that this provides an opportunity, you know, A, to work more one-on-one -on -one with our students, and also that a lot of the subjects that we felt for a long time that are hallmarks of a good musical education, music theory, oral skills, small ensembles, you know, on other topics, this was the time to offer that, you know, both because our virtual large ensembles will be primarily run in sectionals. So that means that individual students' rehearsal time will be shorter, but also because this is a time when, you know, all the educational institutions are really imagining and reimagining how best to serve their students. And I, I'm really excited about what we've come up with. So I'm going to talk a bit about virtual large ensembles and what that's going to look like at NYS in the fall. So I hope you've all had the opportunity to watch the video projects that Prelude, Phil Strings, and Principal put out. I'm, I'm so proud of the work that, that our staff did and our, all of our kids did. Um, you know, these were done kind of on the fly, right? So for the fall, your children can anticipate some really robust projects, you know, full works and even more creativity in what we create. So we're looking at a thorough 10 session program in which our conductors offer a meaningful orchestral education. You know, the vast majority of those sessions will be broken down into sectionals in which each conductor will work individually with sections, which is what we did in PO, Phil Strings or Prelude. And we found that this is really the effective way to lead virtual rehearsals. You know, there will also be periodic meetings for the entire ensemble in which we discuss broader issues for the work, large scale mu musical concerns, and even just social time. But sectionals will last 30 to 40 minutes and they'll fall during the same time frame that the orchestra would normally rehearse. And week to week, we'll be monitoring students' improvement both through the sectionals themselves and regular video submissions from the students that will comment on. And the thing about this format is, as I said, despite the challenges, it really does give us the ability to work one on one with all the students in a way that you're not able to in a traditional orchestra setting. And that is exciting. And all of the conductors will be focused on what makes really good orchestral playing, you know, matched articulations, bow strokes, and a total commitment to just full on playing. And this will culminate in really exciting video projects and as soon as safely possible, you know, raucous and joyous performances of these pieces back in beautiful Norwalk Concert Hall. So um, one final note before I, I hand the conversation over to Raphael. Um, community has always been a really critical element of the Norwalk Youth Symphony experience. And we're really mindful of how challenging it is for our students to feel a sense of community right now. So we're definitely gonna be making a concerted effort to make that part of the experience this fall. We'll host regular game nights for the kids and and come up with other creative ways to make sure that they have the sense of community. You know, we, again, it's really important to us to have as much of a sense of consistency as humanly possible in, in times that, that make that, that much more challenging. So, and I look forward to hearing your, your questions at the, at the end of the session. So at this point, I am going to hand over the conversation to the conductor of Prelude Orchestra. This is Rafael Vedera. And he is going to talk about our theory and oral skills offerings. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, 
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Rafael. I conduct the, the Prelude Orchestra. Um, I'm excited to be here today with all my colleagues, and I'll be uh, speaking about the offerings on music theory and ear training. Um, these are two sides of the same coin, uh, which complement each other in order to facilitate better music making. Uh, no musical education is complete without the study of either one of those subjects. Uh, knowledge of them will aid the young musicians on deciding on how to approach a piece of the repertoire with more intention rather than just guessing uh, how to play uh, and will help them understand how the music they are playing both in solo and ensemble uh, settings is put together. Um, the conductor of concert orchestra, uh, Russell, he put together a very good description uh, of those subjects that I could not improve on so I'll just Say a big thank you, Russell, for this, and this is what I'm going to be reading. Um, the ear training strengthens the relationship between uh, seeing the notated music and internally imagining the sound. Uh, traditionally, the instruction on the subject includes solfege, uh, melodic and rhythmic dictation, interval and chord recognition, and sight scene. And music theory is understanding the building blocks of music. Uh, which is necessary for every musician. Uh, I like to think this is a, it's like understanding the grammar of the language we are speaking. Um, and this course would include several topics depending on the level of each class, uh, including key signatures, circle of fifths, and relative major and minor keys, um, modes and alternate scales, primary and extended chord structures, harmonic progressions, uh, and basic vo uh, voice leading. Uh, both of these topics, ear training and uh, music theory, are to be covered in one class with some activities geared towards ear training and others towards uh, music theory. We'd like to keep the class size small to allow for more chances of individual participation and feedback from the instructor. We anticipate keeping classes to 45 minutes uh, for younger students and uh, one hour long for students uh, on the upper levels. Um, the classes will be mostly activities rather than just lectures. We feel like this is essential to keep students engaged in learning rather than just watching these, their screens. Our conductors have a wide range of experience and expert, uh, expertise to tailor the classes uh, to the age and level of each group. We'll be using age-appropriate materials from games online or uploaded by the instructor to be used with uh, the younger students to interactive work designed to engage the older students with their peers and uh, instructor. And I just want, before I give the word to the next panelist, I want to show, show some of those um, materials. Uh, there are plenty of websites out there for music theory and web-based games that we can use and draw from. But I'm also now currently working on adapting uh, works like these uh, from music mind games that I usually use to introduce music theory. So this is a melodic dictation and melodic uh, recognition patterns. And this is rhythm dictation and rhythm patterns that I usually use in the classroom by younger students that can be definitely adapted to be used online on, on Zoom on the uh, sharing screens and whiteboard and so on. And uh, with that, um, I will pass the, the, the floor or the internet rather <laughs> to the next speaker. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Raphael. And I just, just a couple thoughts in addition to what Raphael just said. You know, everywhere, everywhere else in the world other than America, there's an understanding that music theory and oral skills, it is an essential, essential part of a music education. Um, and, you know, my, I feel so lucky my piano teacher was from Europe, so I started when I was six. And uh, I really attribute that to the way I've progressed. Uh, so at any way, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to pass the baton on to our conductor of uh, Philharmonia Strings, Jessica McNamara, who's going to speak on small ensembles.
Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, so I would like to talk a little bit about how we're going to offer some small ensembles as part of our fall programming. Um, these are going to be typically trios and quartets. Uh, these small ensemble classes will allow the students the opportunity to collaborate with their peers to work on standard chamber music repertoire. Chamber music is a genre all of its own and something that every musician should participate in. Chamber music is similar to solo playing in that each musician is responsible for their own part and there's no one else playing their part along with them. But it's also similar to orchestral playing in that the parts need to fit together to form an ensemble. Chamber musicians learn to be solid and independent on their part, sensitive to how their part fits in with the other musicians around them and how to work together to form a cohesive whole. In our virtual programming, each chamber group will get a weekly coaching session from a member of our conducting staff. Students will also work together to learn their parts, learn what each other are playing, make musical decisions together, and create a final performance. Students will send recordings and videos to each other to play along with and add to. One of the main ways that these small ensemble classes differ from the large orchestral rehearsals is the focus on interaction and friendships. Much of the creative process will be put in the students' hands, tailored to age, of course, with careful guidance and coaching from the conductors. This high degree of ownership, coupled with the very intimate nature of the small ensemble, will allow students to create and strengthen deep connections with peers, even in the virtual format. Small ensemble rehearsals will range from 45 to 60 minutes, depending on age and level of the musicians. And I just want to add that, um, as Jonathan said earlier, we very much are committed to uh, maintaining the social interactions and friendships um, that has been really one of the backbones of Norwalk Youth Symphony. And I feel that these small ensembles are such an awesome place to really, you know, continue to foster that um, and, you know, continue to help their uh, working with the metronome and working with each other and you know, it's just a really great place to do all of that. And it's pretty cool to see how we can manage to do all of that online. So I will pass it back to Jonathan. Oh, thanks, Jessica. And I'm gonna pass it directly on to Russell Gurr, who is the conductor of our concert orchestra. And he is going to talk about a really exciting new offering that we've got in adult education. Russell, take it away, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I think this is such a fantastic idea. I can't believe that it never occurred to us to do this before. Um, what we want to do is do a kind of cocktail hour, um, you know, in the evening, once your kids are in bed, um, where you guys bring wine and both Jonathan and I separately will be doing uh, a series of discussions, lectures, classes, um, about music. And I don't know how many of you um, are able to converse with your kids about music because you guys are musicians. Um, so this is a wonderful opportunity for you guys to be able to connect with your own children about what they spend so much time with us doing. It's a wonderful opportunity for the parents to get to know the conductors better and for the parents to build a sense of community amongst themselves and to get to know each other better. Um, Topics will include things like different periods of music history and uh, composer biographies and some close inspections of certain pieces of music and what the hell does a conductor actually do and anything that you've ever wanted to know about music and never uh, asked. So I think it's going to be a wonderful, um, not particularly formal, but very informative um, way for us to all connect and hopefully for you guys to enjoy learning a bit more about what it is that we all do. That's it. Thank you so much, Russell. And so finally, we're going to pass the baton over to, to Barry um, Zhao, who's our uh, conductor of uh, Phil Wins. So, and he's going to speak about some special topics that we have to offer. Barry, take it away, please. Uh, hi, everyone. It's great to see you uh, this Sunday. Um, you know, just on top of what my colleagues have already discussed, uh, we're also looking to offer um, special events and seminars for students and parents. Um, you know, I'm relatively new to the organization, and one of the things that I found out about working with NYS is that we have access to a large network of top-tier musicians and alumni across the country. 
um, you know, for example, when we first went into e-learning, the principal tuba player of the Seattle Symphony recorded tuba parts for some of our fiddle players. So what a treat it was for um, our students to hear musicians of that caliber play their parts and, and learn from. Uh, so with that being said, we're trying to, this coming semester, we're, we're going to try to look to leverage those contacts to offer um, some really special experiences for students that might, you know, not be uh, lengthy enough to take place in a, you know, 10, 12 week class, uh, but are still fulfilling uh, in other ways. Um, so one of the things we are definitely excited about offering is technique masterclasses. Um, so, you know, just imagine your students learning about phrasing and expression from, you know, the principal cello player from so-and-so symphony or uh, that one tr uh, trumpet teacher out in Chicago who everyone talks about, you know. Um, you know, now that everyone is, you know, doing things on Zoom, we have an opportunity to do uh, events like that. So, you know, that's definitely one of the things we could be offering um, in the fall. Uh, another thing is we've also got a, a lot of talent in-house. Um, I've got to say personally, working with all these conductors, each one of them um, brings something really unique to the table. Uh, and we would be looking to offer, you know, uh, special seminars on topics that we each might feel particularly passionate about. I know um, Dr. Videra uh, has d uh, taught many classes before on practice techniques, um, you know, uh, thoughts and um, strategies for how to make a student's practice time efficient, effective, that, you know, is, is part of a complete music education, but often gets neglected um, uh, throughout the course of, you know, maybe a typical um, public school music education. Um, other topics we might be able to, uh, you know, one that I'm personally passionate about is maybe uh, seminars on performance anxiety, um, prepping for auditions. Um, I, I, you know, and I know I've talked to uh, Jessica about this, um, maybe even a seminar on um, how to best help your student practice. You know, we've, we've all experienced this. Uh, our kid loves music. You know, they talk about it. They hang, about, hang out with their friends, all in their music classes. But for some reason, just can't find the time to practice. You know, how great would it be to learn about, you know, best practices and strategies that really work in helping our kids, uh, you know, practice better, how to make our, our home life much more easier to, um, uh, and, and smoother in, in terms of uh, structuring their day to help them practice. You know, so these, these topics are, um, you know, they can, they range um, across many different topics and, you know, we're super excited about them. And I know, you know, I totally understand that learning through the internet is no way a replacement for the symphony experience. But this is definitely a fantastic opportunity um, for all of us to uh, be a part of some new and exciting ventures for NY NYS that would be enriching for all. So, you know, I highly encourage everyone to look at these special events for the fall that we're going to be offering. And I you know, hope to see you guys at some of them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barry. Um, so I believe at this point, if I'm not mistaken, we can uh, we can open up the field a little bit, yeah, to to questions and answers. Alex, Sarah, was any there anything else you wanted to add at this point? Um, I I don't think we need to. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I think we can just go to the Q and A now. Um, our first question is, are small ensembles suitable for prelude level kids? I will let Dr. Raphael answer that question. Uh, I think it is suitable. It all depends on uh, the level of each individual player and a careful choice of repertoire by the teacher. Um, as uh, conductor of Phil Strings, uh, as Max said earlier, uh, the students will be responsible for their part. So in order for the group to work, each member of the group needs to know their part really well, like they would know their solo repertoire. There's no hiding uh, behind a whole section. So as long as the students uh, can learn their parts uh, and be confident 
playing their part on their own, it's definitely suitable for prelude level students, yes. Um, we've, had, we've had another question. Um, when do the music education classes for parents, when would they be? Would they be on Sunday? Um, those would actually be during the week in the evening. Uh, Jonathan and Russell will be teaching those classes. I don't know if they'll be 7 p.m., 8 p.m., but it'll be like after dinner time. And uh, hopefully you guys consider those classes. I think they'd be a great team building, uh, informative uh, workshops. Okay, now we have another question. Um, how many times a week will students meet? Uh, Jonathan, you wanna answer that one? Sure. Um, so typically they'll, you know, what we're trying to create, right, is, is uh, as close to as possible a feeling of the Sunday rehearsal experience. So their large ensembles will be during their sectionals, will be during whatever time they would normally meet on Sundays. And then we will also have most of that classwork, oral skills, uh, uh, sorry, music theory, small ensembles also on, on Sunday. So basically what you're looking at is once a week classes and large ensembles as people choose to, to, to go. Um, you know, and if we have some special events during the week as well, I think you can anticipate that. I've discussed about the need for some fun game nights as well as these special topics, but mostly Sundays remain the time when your, your kids will be rehearsing. And also one other thing, uh, Sharon, um, Jonathan is able to coach chamber groups on weeknights. So it could be that if we have a certain group of kids that we weren't able to fit into a Sunday afternoon small, small ensemble group, uh, we may offer that during the week. But otherwise, everything will be on Sunday except the special fun game nights. Sarah, is it okay if I add something? Yes. Um, I just want to add, as, as a parent of young children who have been e-learning for the last <laughs> however many weeks, um, the, one of the things that we're discussing and working towards in our planning of all of this is making um, a lot of this and as much as possible very interactive. So this is not just, um, you know, hours of staring at a screen, but really very interactive, lots of playing and, um, of course, playing their instrument, working with each other and um, in the music theory and the oral skills classes, as was said earlier, but again, just to highlight, they're just very interactive games, activities, things like that. So, so less of a passive experience and as much as we can, a, uh, an interactive experience. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Jonathan, we have two questions about auditions. Um, when do the auditions begin? And will there be auditions? I, uh, we did talk about this at the very beginning of the webinar, but I understand people signed in a little bit later. So um, Jonathan, you wanna talk about how we're gonna use accepted and the dates or would you like me to do that? Sure. Actually, why don't you go ahead and do it, Sarah? I think, I think. Okay, all, so um, we are going to use a platform called accepted. Um, there's been quite a few groups that um, other youth orchestras have already used it. Your child may have used Accepted to apply to a summer music program. Accepted allows you to upload your child's uh, video um, on their platform, then the conductors will have the ability to review uh, the audition materials and then uh, do placement. Um, this year we'll have, still have a solo requirement, a scale requirement, but what will be new is there'll be no sight reading, but there'll be orchestral excerpts. And our date, our goal that we have set for the conductors to select their orchestral excerpts and scales and any changes to the solo rep is July 1st. Our plan is to have everything on the website, the link to accept it, no later than July 1st with a date deadline of August 15th to upload your students' um, audition materials. So yes, there will be auditions this year. And we have another question. If the schools return in September, will NYS still be remote until January? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, 
as you know, things change continually. Uh, I have reached out to the city of Norwalk on what the protocols will be for us to return. I have not heard yet, uh, but first and foremost will be our children's safety, uh, their health. Um, so we, we don't know. Could we return in, in the fall? Yes, that is possible. But we are being conservative and proactive. We want to set our online schedules, have them ready and up and running. Um, and then of course, at the last, you know, we'll, we'll be monitoring this all summer, can we go live? But right now we don't even know uh, what it would take to safely bring back the kids to City Hall. Um, yes, sir. Uh, this is Mark Famous. Can I comment on yeah. this also? Yes. So I just, you to put me on screen, I guess. Am I on screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, from the board's perspective, and I just want to answer this from the board's perspective also. Um, if you think about what's happening in the world and with the school systems, there is an incredible amount of unknowns, as Sarah has, has pointed out. And I just want to explain our thinking on this. Our thinking is that even if the schools did return in the fall, we have to let the schools figure out how that's going to work. Uh, the schools are a public funded, you know, state thing. And so they are going to figure out how this will work in the fall. What are the, going to be the requirements for maintaining safety for the children and et cetera. And so our thinking is let them figure this out, you know, because we are a private organization. And when they figure this out, we will be much more prepared than to make uh, better decisions about what to do in January. And then, yes, in January is when we will then make the next big decision about what we do as an organization. So from the board's perspective, that is our thinking about uh, the fall and why we, and I, I think it's clear from this presentation, we're, we're uh, planning to do the fall remote, basically. It would be quite substantially different in the fall from our current situation to change that, I believe. Thank you. And Sarah, actually, if I can just piggyback on that um, a little bit, just to say, I know it was helpful for me to uh, understand as well that from the governor's um, task force and recommendations that extracurricular activities were one of the last things that could be phased in um, for people to, to come together. And so, uh, again, we're anticipating that, that we'll need to um, just be patient and, and wait and see, and, and also to assess um, all of the logistical, environmental, um, physical, financial concerns that may come into play in, in coming back together, temperature checks, supervision, space requirements, all of those logistical things as well. Uh, we will, as a um, board, we will continue to have our ad hoc uh, COVID um, committee and to stay updated with this and certainly pass that information on um, to parents and, and musicians as things develop and become available. Thanks. I, I would also like to add, um, there is a study being done currently. It's being funded, uh, I believe, through the school systems art department. And they are looking at the aspirations of vocalist, instrumentalist, music theater, theater kids, dance kids, um, that show dancing, anyway. And not only are they studying how far the aspirations will go, they're also looking at different materials to how you can stop the spread, like a, a lightweight stuff that would be easy for kids, like Mylar. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, and that won't be out till the end of June. Um, so there's just so much that has to be done before we can even really decide to go back. But as Jonathan and the board and Mark, excuse me, Mark and Alex explained, uh, we do plan to have offer online for now. Okay, now uh, Lisa Smith has asked, will there be a printed breakdown on how the groups will look in the fall? Um, uh, Jonathan, do you wanna answer that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I, I think we will, uh, well, I'm, I'm not highlighted right now, Sarah. Um, I think uh, we will, there'll definitely be printed materials that, and, and more, uh, more printed descriptions of, uh, of everything, of, of how the large ensembles are going to look, how the, the classes are going to look. Um, yeah, you can, this is, you know, this town hall was to be both informative about our, 
our first plans and um, I'm still not highlighted, Sarah. Um, and the, you know, and to get as much both an input from you as well. Um, and, oh, I am, okay, sorry. And uh, the, yeah, so, but uh, yes, you can absolutely anticipate more specific information as we approach the, the deadline date for your, for your application. Okay, it looks now like we have some questions in the chat room. So let me go find those. Um, will there be a concerto competition? Jonathan? Yeah, I, 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 I would say not in the fall. I would think that that would be pushed into the, the winter, you know, if in, in, a, in the scenario where we come back in the, the winter instead. I think it makes more sense to do that when we can be live. Um, but yeah, my my intention is absolutely again as much do as much consistency as possible, and as soon as we can do a concerto competition, then we do a concerto competition. Uh, we have another question in the chat. Um, if we don't need to use city hall on our for our rehearsals, can the rehearsal schedule be more flexible, say on Saturday instead of a Sunday? And are we going to offer any summer programs? Uh, Jonathan, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, I think that. You know, our feeling was, and I'm more, of course, you know, interested to hear other people's input, um, that we should try to keep things as consistent next season as, as possible. And that meant sticking to Sundays for now. That said, you know, as Sarah was talking about, you know, if there are small ensembles that for some reason that they're, um, for, for them, a, a, a class would be better suited on a Saturday, on a weekday night. I think that, you know, there can be some flexibility, but for now our our intention is to is to stick with, with Sundays. And as for summer plans, maybe sir, you might want to speak to that. I we hadn't thought about it so much only I think to give people a, a chance to regroup, uh, all of you as as well as as all of us. But uh, Sarah, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to that. Um, no, we had not. Um... I could, we could do, you know what, let's just do a quick poll. I think I can do that. Maybe not. Never mind. I don't know where I went. Um, Sarah, can I comment on the summer? Yes. Uh, the one thing I would add on the summer, and this is not an NYS thing as much as just a general parent, uh, parent to parent thing, is that there, there are a lot of um, um, traditional music camp things going on that have actually gone virtual. And so if you haven't considered some of them because of the travel and the other things like that, you may check them out. And I, I think you could pretty much find them or uh, on Google, you can also contact some of us who've done some of those things. And I'm not sure if that's a good, good idea or a bad idea for your particular situation, but I would encourage you to check those things out. Um, again, there's several of them. You can even contact me. I, I have some of them. I'm sure Sarah has some too. Um, but yeah, again, NYS as an organization was just trying to catch up with what we're going to do in the fall, I think. Um, and if for any reason your children are interested in music technology and Tempo is having a summer um, uh, class on technology, music technology, um, I do know that. And Mark said there's a lot of programs out there. Uh, we have another question, uh, I think, um, about auditions, since people sign on at different times. Uh, our goal is for July 1st to have everything on the website you need to know for your child to audition. And uh, we would hope that everyone has all their um, videos uploaded no later than August 15th. So that is the deadline, but the earlier the better. Um, and now we have another question over here. All right. Can I say something about yes. auditions for a second? Yes. And just to be very clear, she's talked about this uh, platform called Accepted which is just to help us manage it. But the audition process will be, will be uh, if it's not obvious, a recording with instructions about what needs to be in that recording, which you will then upload to that platform and, and um, um, that, that platform will help us manage it. Also, the board wants to make very clear that if someone has a technological difficulty in doing that, they can reach out to Sarah and we will help them figure out how to do that. We don't want anybody to not audition because they don't have the right technology. Uh, here's a, a question maybe for Jonathan. How many of the classes can students participate and will there be different sessions for each class available during a Sunday? 
And I think the answer is uh, to the second question is yes. And the, the, quest, the answer to the first question is as many as they want. Yeah, I mean, and that people tell me if I'm wrong on this, but that, that's really what we're, we're hoping to provide for your students is as broad of a musical education as, as possible. So that yes, if they want to take music theory and oral skills, do it. If you want to do, be involved in a small ensemble, do it. If there are some of these other topics that they're involved with, please. And then of course, you know, these, the large ensembles. And again, in the, in these large ensembles, you know, as different as it is, of course, being virtual, you know, we, we are trying to craft, uh, sorry, craft, as, as Jessica was saying, as community-based and as interactive a situation as humanly possible. So we're really, we're excited about, about all of these offers. Jonathan, can I tag on to your reply also that um, as we're crafting these programs over the summer, um, you know, we're really looking forward to being able to offer all of these classes at all of the different levels and uh, and ages for all of the the students. I think that came across in our in our individual presentations earlier. But just to make that clear, all of these theory classes and oral skills classes are going to be um, crafted so that they can be adapted to all the different ages and levels. Um, and one of the things that that we're going to be working hard towards, um, which I personally am actually kind of excited about, is to create a a cohesive um, plan so that at all the different levels and no matter who's teaching the class, there's going to be cohesion and vertical alignment between all of the classes that are being offered. So that'll be cool to collaborate with uh, our colleagues to, you know, finalize all of this curriculum. Thanks, Jessica. Hey, Jonathan, remind me, did someone address the fact that we're going to have placement tests for music theory and the ear training? Oh, no, I believe we did not. So let's just say that quickly. We will have placement tests <laughs> for for music theory and ear training to help place students in the appropriate level. So uh, parents, if you are interested in these extra classes, the earlier you start your audition process, the better it will be because we can then gauge how many kids are interested in any of the small class offerings. And if you do uh, select music theory and the ear training for your child after we receive that uh, information, you will receive a test for your child to take for placement. It'll be on the honor system, so please don't help your child if you're a musician because you don't want your child to be in a class that they're not quite ready for. But um, I that you know, we're very excited for, to offer these classes. Okay, this is an excellent question. Uh, Jonathan, will there be performance opportunities for the ensembles? And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I hope, I hope all of you, I'm going to answer it in, in two parts. Um, I hope all of you have seen the, the videos that we've created for Brass Ensemble for, oh, and we didn't speak about Brass Ensemble, actually. Brass Ensemble will continue, and those will be hour-long rehearsals with, with Stephen Nugget, who our, our Brass kids really love. Um, I hope you've all had an opportunity to look at the videos that the Brass Ensemble created, that Prelude created, that Phil Strings created, that, that um, my own orchestra principal created. Uh, we are going to, every orchestra will be, first of all, creating obviously m even more robust versions of that in the projects that we do in the, in, in the fall. Um, then in addition, uh, it goes without saying that as soon as we can come back in, again, then all this gets performed live, <laughs> you know, and, and we can't wait for that moment. And the same, the same goes for the small ensembles as well, that there will be video, anything we, any creative means by which we can, you know, come up with great video projects, we will. And then as soon as we can go live, we go live. Okay, we have a question on tuition that I'll send to uh, Jane. Uh, she's our board member and also treasurer of Norwalk U Symphony. Um, Jane, someone would like clarification that there won't be adjustment for the spring tuition due to COVID-19. And I know NYS offered online sessions, but this is not as the planned FTF program. Jane, are you there? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, what, um, 
You know, NYS has continued to um, provide excellent programming and I, um, we have been in touch with members of our community and um, we've, um, our students have benefited greatly from the, um, the online programming, the layering projects. Um, so this is what we're offering um, in lieu of um, some sort of refund. Um, we've um, decided that for um, the students who are returning, that um, they will be able to get um, their audition fees um, refunded um, in the way of, uh, uh, I guess, a credit towards their tuition. Um, so, um, I, you know, it's the the cost of the NYS programming, although we've gone online and it seems like it's limited, actually we've incurred a lot of different expenses um, that that just doesn't make it possible for us to uh, provide any refunds to our, our uh, membership. So I hope this answers your question. And I would just add to what Jane said that um, the it, it sometimes it's hard to realize, you know, from from the on the other side of things, uh, just how the the intense nature of the work for the for all the conducting staff of the this online programming. Um, the the crazy thing is, you know, we think about you know the massive amount of time we put into score study and all the other ways we prepare for 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 rehearsals. It it seems like a drop in the bucket by comparison to the amount of work that goes into creating this virtual programming. It is really, really time intensive. And I say that only to let you know that we are going above and beyond in every way, shape, way and shape we can for, for your kids behind the scenes right now. And if I could just interject as well, um, it was a heavy lift uh, for all of our conductors to um, go you know, full stop into a virtual program from what had been planned uh, in the spring. And I, I, for one, am tremendously grateful for all of your work and dedication uh, with that and, and to seamlessly go, uh, relatively seamlessly, <laughs> um, it seemed to me seamless, uh, to go um, and learn the technology and uh, come up to speed and provide programming um, for our musicians uh, was um, really goes to the uh, commitment and, and dedication um, that you all have. And so I'm again, tremendously grateful. Um, and uh, again, it was no easy, easy task. And there was so much uh, behind the scenes that, you know, as a, a parent of musicians, we had no, uh, no idea because you, you did it so so beautifully, right? And I think that that's uh, a, a musician's trick, right? You make it look easy uh, and we don't get to see all the hours of work that go into uh, into it behind the scenes. So I thank you. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we have another question through chat, which I'm not 100% I understand, uh, but it's from Catherine who asks, will there be information on contacting PUS conductors available so that students can ask questions. As students, are, if you're talking about today's webinar, they were invited to participate. If your child has any questions, we'd love to hear from them today. Uh, we typically at NYS do not give out the conductor's emails. I forward all emails I receive though on their behalf to the specific conductors. And also to ease communication, we're going to start using Google Classroom for all our classes in the fall. The, the ear training and music theory class, the large ensembles. Uh, and that will allow the conductors to interact with the kids individually and as a group. Um, but if, if I didn't answer your question properly, please, you know, just send another question through chat. And, and I would say, you know, I, I can imagine that more questions will arise, you know, about some of the, you know, the specifics of, of this programming. And I think that as we get closer to the, the the July one deadline, where we put more stuff on the website, I think some things will also become will become clearer. But yeah, absolutely, you know that 
it, it, this is a different world. So please do reach out to the office if the, the students have any questions about what virtual programming will look like next year so that we can you know, respond in, in, in short fashion. Um, does anyone on the panel see any questions that we did not answer in within the chat or our Q&A? All right, I'll, oh. I'll turn it. Oh. Oh, here we got another one. Okay, uh, we had someone that unfortunately signed in late and missed most of the discussion. Um, Sean, we're going to make this um, live. We're, we're recording today and uh, we're going to make it live to answer um, anyone who was not able to attend. Hopefully during this webinar, all the questions have been answered. But I can also email you tomorrow and we can have a phone conversation. Okay. Anything else? And of course, I'm in the, you know, I'm around all summer, so please uh, email me or call um, the office for any questions. And again, as Jonathan said, if you hear of any families who have um, issues with technology on uploading the audition requirements, uh, please have them contact me. And we're happy to work with families. Oh, we got another question. Uh, Mary has a question on when uh, can we expect to have the fall programs as well as schedule and tuition available to us. Um, our, our deadline for tuition uh, and audition requirements is July 1st. Um, we've kind of the fall program schedules, we'll work on that, but hopefully they fall in at the same time frame as what your child was um, committed to in the fall you know, one, one thirty to 4.30 for a principal, uh, but that, that's not set in stone yet, but that will come available in the summer. Anyone want to weigh in on that question? And Sarah, when you said the deadline, you mean we're, we're opening up the audition platform on July 1st? Yes, and yeah. we should have our tuition, we should know the tuition by then too. Right. Uh, Sarah, if I could just add, um, as in the past, um, we do have financial aid available. Um, so um, our, the um, criteria is listed on our website. So um, just so that our parents are aware of that, um, you know, we have uh, scholarships based on need um, available to the, uh, the NYS students as we have in the past. Yes, oh, and I don't think we've mentioned, Jane, that the tuition will be based on the programming from September through December, September right. through December. So it's like, a, so it'll be a half a, of a year a tuition invoice you will receive once you got, we've placed your child. Yeah, and our scholarships, as uh, um, it's applied in the past, applies to um, um, uh, tuition um, for the large ensembles as well as the um, private lessons, and will also extend to the small classes that we're offering um, this fall. I mean, and I think we can say broadly, Sarah, right, that it's, we're looking for a, what, about a noon to, that it really will be similar to, to what, what it's been in the past, right? That, that it, Sarah, when you were yeah. talking about, again, we're talking Sunday afternoons with, yes. with yes. a little bit of flexibility around small ensembles. Right. Yeah, we, we um, the conductors um, 
some are going to be available four hours on a Sunday to teach their large ensemble plus small classes. Some are available more hours, but we really want everything to fit in the noon to 6 p.m. time frame. And it's, you know, I understand how you want to be able to uh, do your child's other programs. Um, uh, we have another question, Jessica. Will there be auditions for the small ensembles? That's a good question. Um, I think that we as a conducting staff will um, come up with the answer as we, you know, fi finalize all of our programming throughout the summer. But my instinct, and Jonathan, correct me if you feel differently, but my instinct would say that we would really base that mostly on the audition that is already being submitted. Um, we'll have a good sense of, you know, how the students play and how they respond to the orchestral excerpts that are, uh, have been proposed to them. Um, so I think we'll have a good sense of it through that. And then if the conducting staff feels that we need any further information, we'll figure out a way to, to get that. But the objective will be to place small ensembles with students who are of similar level, of similar peer groups, things like that, so that the, the musical challenge can really be met and also the social component can really be met. Yep, that's exactly right. Got another question. Do you want me to get that, Sarah? Yes. Yeah. So, um, what? The, how we'll we'll handle it for uh, somebody asked about preferences for small ensembles and large ensembles, and um, yeah, w the understanding is that, and and this will actually impact the the orchestral excerpts that they audition. Is that when people are auditioning that they will be considered for the ensemble they're already in as well as the ensemble that's that's the the next level up so the we I, I don't think you need to your, indicate your preference for in terms of small ensembles there's obviously it's not about level so much as the other you know the other students that they're participating with so um, we're just going to be trying to match kids up with the people that we think that they uh, that they'll, they'll match best with. Sarah, can I put a question on the floor? Sure. Okay, and, and I just want to make sure this is asked because uh, I've heard it asked of me. Uh, and I just want to make sure we can talk about it openly. Uh, what happens if my child, and again, I'm asking for someone else, if my child just doesn't work with the remote, it doesn't work for them, the Zoom thing doesn't work for them, uh, what's, what's my path forward for continuing to join NYS maybe in January and things like that? Can I speak to that, Jonathan? Yeah, go for it, Barry. Um, yeah, I think that's a really great question. Um, I think, I don't think any of us would have like a really um, <coughs> answer that satisfies anybody because, you know, best case scenario, we're all back, you know, in the, re in the concert hall rehearsing and playing together. Um, but what I will say is, you know, judging from all the meetings we've already had planning out um, uh, this fall semester, uh, we as a conducting staff are very, very excited to present these to you. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's going to look a lot different from even what we did during the spring. It's going to be a lot look more polished, uh, more nuanced, better planned out, um, and more specific to, to the kids. So I, I guess what I would say is, um, you know, I, I give it a try because, you know, um, I know personally we're super excited about it. And I, I think, I'm hoping that we can win some uh, people over by doing that. I think as well, if I can interject, the, the format and the, uh, with the Google Classrooms and, um, and the um, curriculum appears to be much more interactive. Um, so that may be, uh, may address some of the issues for online platforms. But in that, in, in the event that online just is not where you want your kid, we will, we are also talking about having auditions in, in December um, for, uh, for the January session. Is that correct, Sarah? And, and one other thing that, that Jonathan had talked about when he described the large ensembles, but I think is worth highlighting here, 
is, um, you know, as we went through the spring, we, we had some amazing projects that were put together and, um, you know, everybody, families, conductors, everybody really um, did our best on a, on a short time frame. But I think that one of the main things that we're going to be adding to our large ensembles for, uh, for the, the fall is like Jonathan had talked about, uh, uh, you know, some some video submissions that are commented on by conductors and, um, you know, just really continuing that individual work and the feedback cycle from when a student is working on something and they submit their current where they're at and then they get some feedback and they continue working from there. So I, I think that that's something that we're working hard to, uh, to further. And also, as we've talked about multiple times, the, the social element. So those are some things that we're gonna be really diving more deeply into for fall. Great. Looks like we have one final question on how do you let the conductors know about your passion to being, or intention to being a small ensemble? I, I realized we did not answer this. Accepted, when you go to um, register for an audition through Accepted, we're gonna have programs. You will select large ensemble. You would select small ensemble. You would select music theory and ear training class, or any of one of those three, two of those three, whatever your interest child's interested in. So that lets us know this child is interested in a small ensemble and the conductors will listen to their audition knowing that and place them not only in a large ensemble but a small ensemble. So I think that was our last question. Um, Alex? All right. So uh, again, I'll, I'll say, you know, if you missed anything, um, we will be, we have recorded this and we'll be posting uh, this to the website so you can review it um, at your convenience. If, if you have further questions, we are certainly available. Um, you can email those to Sarah and she'll be happy to uh, answer those. And we're still developing some information, um, you know, and some details. We will certainly keep you updated um, as, as those develop. Um, thank you so much to our conductors uh, today for, for joining us and presenting. Um, this was very helpful uh, to gain a better understanding of what we can expect in the fall. Um, and I uh, am just so heartened by the sense of community um, that you are, are continuing to stay focused on in ways to engage um, our musicians and uh, engage them with uh, you and the content um, uh, and the music. Um, I know that for, for me and for my kids, uh, NYS, the reason they, they go every week is the connections that they have um, with, with their friends. And so um, it, it is a challenge um, when they look at a season when they're not going to be playing side by side with, uh, with people and getting that, um, you know, that sense of, of friendship and, and engagement every week, um, but it, it is uh, first in your minds, I know, to continue um, those opportunities, and, and I am heartened by that. And I also uh, know that my kids enjoyed, uh, for instance, my, my senior enjoyed uh, meeting Jonathan's dog, uh, which would not have been possible had we not had these virtual um, platforms and, and this strange uh, time and, and challenge for programs. So I am uh, heartened and um, excited about these opportunities. I am definitely appreciative that uh, music appreciation will be offered uh, for parents. I think that is high time that I stepped up and, and did something like that. Uh, so I, I thank you for that opportunity. Um, and my kids, I'm sure will thank you as well. Um, going over some dates, we will we anticipate having uh, July, July 1st, um, opening up our audition platform, please, you know, we understand that this is new. And if you have questions on how to use that platform, um, if you have questions with the technology, we, we encourage you to reach out to us. We are here for you. Um, and uh, then we look towards a deadline of August 15th for um, audition submissions and um, bringing our community back in one way or another uh, with our season starting on September 13th. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, uh, and, and we look forward to, to staying in touch and uh, um, keeping together. <laughs>